Hi, I'm Venus O'Hara and welcome to another video. Today I'm making my very first series review video. I had to make one after watching Sex Life. I saw it on Netflix and oh my god, after I finished watching it on Friday I was inspired to make this video. And if you haven't seen it and you're thinking about seeing it, beware that this video will contain spoilers. I'm going to be talking about all of every, all the impressions that I got from it and the ending. So beware. Anyway, I made some notes here that I probably can't read, but first of all, I actually was intrigued to watch this series because I saw an interview with the author of the book, 44 Chapters About Four Men, and that was written by B.B. Easton. And I know that this Sex, Sex Life series on Netflix is actually based on that book. So anything that's about a real story and um, women questioning having it all and marriage and motherhood and uh, sexuality, something that I find really, really interesting. So in the actual series, Sex Life, there are not four men. It's narrowed down to two. There are three main characters. It's um, Billy, who is the housewife, and um, she's married to Cooper. And then she's having lots of fantasies about her ex-boyfriend, Brad. Yeah, so she's married, a beautiful house, living in the suburbs. She's supposed to have everything that everyone would want. But there is something kind of, um, yeah, she has these desires that seem to be unfulfilled. And at the beginning, it kind of opens up with her almost kind of desiring her husband. Both of the guys in this film are just so hot. They're very, very, very sexy. And there's a scene at the beginning when um, her husband is kind of getting undressed to shower and you're just like, wow, he's so fit. It's kind of nice to have that kind of eye candy, um, <laughs> male eye candy. We don't really get that enough, I don't think. And um, that was nice to have. But as the series progressed, her husband was really vanilla. So any kind of like, wow, kind of for me kind of went away because I was thinking, oh my God, this character is not really doing it for me. But the other character, the ex-boyfriend who is... Um, who she's having these kind of unresolved fantasies with. He's kind of, um, yeah, I didn't I find him, I, I don't know how to say it, but um, it's really interesting because the, the husband is kind of like the good guy who's never hurt her and the past boyfriend is the is the bad guy and, um, he, and he's the one that she can't get out of her head. And that's kind of like another question that's, why do we go for bad guys? That's the kind of um, something that we could discuss for a long time and make a separate video about it. But it just kind of, um, as the series unravels, you see all the kind of ways that he's disappointed her in the past and he's let her down. And you just think, oh my God, why do we, why do we do this to ourselves? Why do we accept certain behaviors from people and then and not leave? Anyway, it's a kind of, it does seem to be quite a toxic relationship. Let me just write something down here. Um, so she's, so basically she's at home with her kids and um, she's a housewife and she's started, she actually starts to write a journal about her past life before she was married and all the crazy sex that she had with Brad. And her husband actually reads the journal and that's kind of, that's, it's quite interesting um, to see how he, how he reacts to it and tries to start doing some of those sexual things with her, but it doesn't really seem to, to work out that well. So at, at the beginning, I thought it would be like her going from one guy to the other and just kind of comparing and contrasting, but it does seem to be most of the sex scenes that you see in the, um, in the actual series are flashbacks from her relationship with Brad. And it's just like, wow, insane, which takes me to the next point, which is the sex scenes. And I did actually love um, the sex scenes in this uh, series. I think that even though there were a lot of them, I think they were definitely justified to actually show that amount of passion between two people. And and also the fact that there was emphasis on female pleasure and um, clitoral stimulation with, with the hands and, and cunnilingus, which is something we don't really see enough of, in my humble opinion. So that's something that's really good to see, kind of like, it was really centered on female desire so hopefully we can see some more of that in the future and i've got written down here the shower scene oh my god um there is an epic shower scene on in episode three around minute 1920 when the husband starts stalking the lover and then 
he goes to the same gym as him and then, then they go to the shower and they're both naked and like oh my god all this male eye candy and he couldn't he can't help but notice that he has a massive schlong and, and they actually show the full frontal so <laughs> there's like two parts of impact there i mean just seeing that on a on a netflix series is a bit kind of like oh my god they actually showed that and also the size of this thing it's just like I've seen lots online. Is it real? Is there? Is it prosthetic? Is it? You know, we just don't really know. That <laughs> it's a bit up in the air, but it's very interesting. And um, that was a kind of like a gobsmacking moment. It will be unforgettable. It could be. It could become something like Basic Instinct, the the famous scene with Sharon Stone. Mm. Yeah. So the two characters. It's kind of like the husband, the good guy, and then Brad, the bad guy. The so husband, good guy. Brad, the, the ex boyfriend, the bad guy. And but he just seemed to be quite manipulative throughout the series. He won't just let Billy be. He he just kind of keeps kind of provoking her, and um, that's something I didn't like about the character in the end. And also the fact that women kind of fall for that. I don't think I'm not sure about the message of that. Yes, I didn't really like that that part of him anyway. Yeah, other parts were great. And yeah, so there's a big question about you know having it all in life and um there is i think it's episode six when um in a voiceover she talks about or she goes to see an old she's actually a psychologist so she goes to see an old colleague of hers to to, to share what's going on at home with him and they talk about the 85 percent and the 15 percent and she talks about how she can get the 85 percent of everything she wants in life the, the husband the kids and the house and all of that but you're still kind of craving that 15%. And sometimes if you go after that 15%, you can lose the 85%, you can lose everything. And there's there's so many examples of that in life, people who, you know, were having extramarital affairs, then they end up getting divorced. Um, So I think um, that's something that I know, friends who've been in long marriages, who've had to have had to deal with that constant fear of um, if their partner finds out they could lose everything. And then some people have found out and they have lost everything and they're living in some kind of studio apartment and they're only seeing their kids part-time, which is a really sad situation to be in. But that 15% of that sexual kind of energy or whatever it is, or attractions, extramarital attractions and um, desire is, is very powerful, even though it's not the majority of the life. Of Yeah, so it's very, very... Um, it does question a lot of things. And also... Um, when they're trying to become or maybe see how they can resolve this, um, how would you say it, Billy being so fascinated with her ex because the husband keeps reading the journal, I think, I can't remember actually. But anyway, they're trying to see what they can do and they go end up going to this sex party with some neighbours of theirs to try and maybe spice up their their um, marriage. And there's a scene in it when the neighbor that take, takes them there, well, it, it becomes obvious that Cooper, the husband, is quite intrigued by it all. But Billy becomes kind of very uncomfortable thinking this is not really where we want to be going um, with this. And he ends up getting a blowjob from the neighbor in front of her face, which is just like, <gasps> and it's kind of interesting because I know that some of my friends who've been unfaithful or um, they often can't imagine that their good, perfect partner, official partner, would ever fantasize about being unfaithful. And it just goes to show that everyone is capable of, of that. I mean, and, and um, the fact that this good guy, Cooper, this amazing kind of um, never hurt her ever, kind of gets this blow drop in front of her face. So it's, it's very... Because um, I can think that a lot of people in, in monogamous relationships can kind of um, feel very uncomfortable the idea of thinking about their partner with someone else in front of their face is just like, oh no, it's just uh, unbearable. Yeah, so that's interesting. It's a real kind of real twist as well. Um, So then in the end, um, they decide to try and make a go of it. And, um, but then she's in a school play and it's all kind of like um, perfect housewife situation with all the other mothers in the school for this school play. And um, she's trying to kind of, she she tries she tries to um, become the perfect wife and it's not quite there's something missing there and she says that I, she actually does want to have it all and it just seems to be obvious that she can't have it all with her husband there's always going to be that fifteen percent extra 
that's that's unfulfilled. So in the end, she starts running on the way to Brad's apartment and um, and then says, I'm not leaving my husband, but F, fuck me now, or something like that. And it's a very ambiguous uh, ending because we don't know if she's actually... Well, it's insinuated that maybe that she's actually spoken to her, her husband about this and he also has this parallel attraction going on with his boss. So it looks like without it being explicitly explained that they've both decided to be maybe open and honest. And I think that type of ending has been a bit disappointed for the um, romantic monogamists who wanted to um, see a happy ending and her going back to her husband. Whereas, yeah, it just opened a can of worms for a new discussion about polyamory and um, whether it's okay to have such a strong sexual attraction with someone who's not in your primary primary relationship so that's very interesting I thought mm. so yeah I wanted to share my reflections with it with you because I was just um, kind of blown away by this series it was really interesting especially I really did love um, the female desire in the sex scenes for sure and, um, and also she does, in the end, go back to work. Because, I mean, when I think about, um, I'm a single woman who's child-free, and there is sometimes this um, pressure from society or peers to actually, or this idea that um, that's what we're supposed to want in life, is to actually get married to a rich guy, have a couple of kids and have a, have a house. And, um, and and it's okay to not, to not be fulfilled with that. I mean, I know when I read the book... Um, the Feminine Mystique by Betty Friedan, which is, I think, from the 60s. Um, this idea of just um, having everything you're supposed to want and then not feeling fulfilled is, is, is nothing new. But I do know women who are very fulfilled by that role and being at home, being with kids and, um, and not working. But for me, I think I would go crazy in that type of situation. And in the end, she actually does go back to work. And I do think it's important to to have a sense of purpose in life that goes beyond your family because in the end I've seen it with many women who they're living their whole lives through their through their families so their the kids um, the husband the house whereas the kids the husband they're all kind of they've also also got external interest they've got school or a job and then the woman's kind of like doesn't have much for herself so I really do believe that it's that it's important to have a career or a hobby or something that's fulfilling that's not that's for yourself that's what I think anyway, because I think I would go absolutely crazy in that situation and I can kind of really empathise with um, with the character of Billy, who's kind of um, become something, that, someone that she doesn't really recognise. Yeah, so what about you? What do you think? Have you seen the series and what do you think of all of this about polyamory? Can you have it all? And some people think also it's quite selfish for a mother to even have desires that go beyond her children or her marriage so I think in the end we have to recognize that everyone's human even though we kind of think that mothers should be saints Mm. anyway I'd love to hear your thoughts on this and if you have any to share please leave a comment below and if you have any suggestions for new videos please don't don't hesitate to contact me at venus at venusohara.org or on instagram at venusohara thanks for watching